Okay, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's Millennial Trades. I've been running a lot of errands today. I wanna put this video out real quickly. Uh, what I'm gonna talk about in this video is some of Jamie Dimon's most recent comments about the dollar, about crypto. Um, I wanna talk about dollar theory and maybe some forecasts going forward, going into the next six months, into the next 12 months, as far as the dollar is concerned. And then later we'll kind of wrap it up and talk about um, my trading this week. I think I'm just gonna sit out tomorrow because I'm working tomorrow and I'm, I'll be working Saturday as well, feeding Amazon again. So I'll talk about all of that uh, later on. Um, I was gonna read some Bible verses too, but I still need to get them together because a lot of them have to do with uh, financial life. You know, a lot of Bible verses do pertain to finances. So I want to pick some of those out and try to relate them to some of the stories that we're, uh, we're seeing here today. I'm first going to play this clip. This is from uh, CNBC. And, you know, it's a bunch of characters from CNBC interviewing Jamie Dimon of JP Morgan. And so... Uh, it's pretty funny. You'll see with one of the comments he makes about crypto, he makes uh, Becky Quick laugh and some of the other people. It was an awkward question that he got because I think he's expressed before that he doesn't like talking about crypto, but this one kid on CNBC just keeps asking him about crypto. So here we go. I throw into the mix, which I think is a small piece, but maybe you think it's a bigger piece. Janet Yellen called the, the failure of FTX last week. A, a Lehman moment in crypto. I don't know if you think that's contained. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Do you think it's a symbol of something larger that's happening in the economy? I, I, crypto is a complete sideshow, okay? And right. you guys spend too much time on it. And I've made my views perfectly clear about crypto right. tokens are like pet rocks. And, there's, right. and, and, and pu people hyping this stuff up. She that thought it was funny. Blockchain is not real. Right. That doesn't mean smart contracts won't be real or Web 3.0, but cryptocurrencies that don't do anything, I don't understand why people are spending time. But I don't think she meant it's a Lehman moment. I think she meant it's a Lehman moment, moment for, for crypto. crypto. Yes. For crypto. But crypto is worth a trillion dollars. <clears throat> the other thing the American public should look at when you look at crypto, if you look at all the buying and selling, so it, 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 Bitcoin's worth like under a trillion dollars today, and we're not even sure that's a real market, by right. the way. There's 20 to 30 billion of ransomware. So, I mean, geez, that was um, that was a lot of opinions coming from Jamie Dimon there. A couple of things I want to unpack first. Before he made this, these kind of comments, he was talking about um, the dollar and its relation to the rest of the world. And I think this is why he got this question, because, you know, there are a lot of people out there that think, um, that the American economy is going to completely collapse or that the dollar is going to collapse or that somehow, you know, the Fed is not solvent or at least can't continue to portray the idea that we're so solvent as a, as a nation, you know, with the central bank and all of the government debt. So this is why he was asked about crypto. But when, when he was talking about the dollar, he's basically predicting dollar strength in, the dollar strengthening going into next year, probably going into 2024. Uh, the downside about this, and he says he's concerned about the emerging markets, right? That would probably be, you know, a lot of these Asian markets, maybe a lot of these markets in South America that he's talking about, possibly European markets, Eastern European markets. He says that the dollar surging, like, you know, a lot of the big banks are predicting, and this is what the Fed kind of wants to see. Uh, it could potentially hurt um, other nations and other foreign companies. So think of like funds, retirement funds, pension funds in other countries that are buying assets in America. They have to convert their euros or whatever it is that they're trading into dollars first. Long story short, there's a lot of debt that's denominated in dollars throughout the entire world. So uh, a lot of that debt may get defaulted on, which will destroy the amount of dollars in the system. It's a uh, very interesting concept, but uh, Jamie Dimon kind of talked about this. And um, so, you know, is the crypto market like a symbol? That's what the CNBC uh, anchor was asking him. Is it a, a symbol of something more or deeper in the financial markets? And his response about crypto was that, you know, you guys spend way too much time on this stuff. It's a complete sideshow. But maybe Jamie Dimon's trying to... Uh, you know, project a little bit of the bank and the Federal Reserve's, 
you know, because they're, they're a little bit of a sideshow too. Maybe he's trying to project some of that onto crypto. I'm not trying to, um, you know, side with the big banks here as to which is worse, big banks or crypto. But it de definitely seems like the banks and the traditional banking institutions are more stable as of right now. I know there's rumors that Wells Fargo uh, might be having some issues, maybe some liquidity issues uh, because of the housing market. Uh, Wells Fargo is very, very, they're like the number one writer of mortgages throughout the entire world. So um, if there is a big downturn in the housing market, they're gonna be exposed to that. But you gotta wonder who else is exposed to not only the housing market, but the crypto market, this sideshow, as Jamie Dimon puts it. Um, we know that BlackRock and Larry Fink, they were exposed to it. Larry Fink's being asked to step down because he's, some say he's mismanaging BlackRock, which is the, the biggest asset manager in the world because he's focused on cultural Marxism and not <laughs> um, profits. I just dropped my keys down there. That's not good. So, yeah, Jamie Dimon, uh, is he right about the dollar? Should we believe him on his, you know, forecasts for uh, the uh, the future as far as the dollar is concerned? And how is that going going to affect Americans? Well, I'm pretty much like eighty percent in cash, right? A lot of that cash I've made over the past few months, but I'm eighty percent in cash, uh, if not more. You know, and I am expecting my dollars to buy more tomorrow than they did today, right? I expect my dollars to buy more uh, going into 2023 than they bought in 2022. I mean, you could already see that with the crypto markets, with the stock markets. Commodities did come down somewhat. I would like to see that continue. Um, so I think it's something worth following and something worth speculating about and you know Jamie Dimon sure JP Morgan they they're all the big banks they're crooks they're making so much money but the thing about um Jamie Dimon is he we should give him credit because he became a billionaire he's worth over a billion dollars uh, through being an employee he didn't start a company he's not like uh, um you know one of these startup guys or one of these technologists he he's simply employed and he was able to amass a lot of net worth. So that is something to perhaps look up to, perhaps admire. But, you know, all these people, uh, whether it's Sam Bankman, Freed, or Jamie Dimon, I think we should be a little skeptical uh, of everything they say. But I tend to believe that, yes, the dollar is going to continue to get stronger. So that being said, I am pretty much all in cash right now. And besides um, just trading, I am working somewhat you know i'm working sporadically as a caterer i've kind of explained this to you guys um and it's it's pretty good uh it's a pretty good way to to an easy way to make extra cash and the reason it's good is well another good reason to work is because it's guaranteed income with absolutely no risk whereas if i'm going to trade right you know, the more times I put myself out there in the market or the more chances I take or whatever, the, the more exposure I have to downside risk when it comes to my capital. So that's another good reason I like to scoop up, you know, a few hundred dollars here and there, um, doing a few hours worth of catering. And it's a lot of fun too, because we get to travel all over the, the area. You know, we cook in all kinds of different kitchens and uh, we make all kinds of different uh, items that people order. Sometimes we do delivery, sometimes we do full catering service. Sometimes we do weddings, corporate events, all kinds of stuff. So, um, you know, it, it, it's just good. It's a good thing to do because trading can be very isolating. You know, trading is like, I don't know. I, I know a few other people that are involved in the stock market, but I don't know anybody that scalps like I do. And I certainly don't know anybody that's, um, you know, just kind of, Mm, on the same level when it comes to trading, when it comes to like the amount of capital I have and the kind of trades I'm putting on, you know, I, I tell some people that ask me about it, you know, they're like, well, how big are some of your trades? I'm like, well, I might put $2,000 in one trade, you know, but my account is worth 10 K. Obviously I'm not going to hold the 2000 all the way to zero, but there is a risk that you could be down, you know, 500, a thousand dollars, um, in a day. So, it's uh, it's psychologically uh, traumatizing, but 
That being said, it has made me stronger. You know, the more times I've like made money and then lost it all, it's definitely made my mentality a lot stronger. That being said, uh, the last thing that I want to mention about all of this is that um, the uh, the capital that I started with, which was about three hundred dollars in cash, that I've now traded up to. I, I have over $7,000 in my account now, but I've made several very large deposits. So, I mean, I'm up big on the year. Um, the last thing I want to mention is that I want to stay there. I want to stay in that place where I'm up on the year. Even if I'm down a little bit more than I am now, that won't be a big deal. Like if I only have $6,000 in my account or $5,000 in my account, that's not a big deal. I would rather have 10 or $12,000 $12, in my account by the end of the year. Um, but as long as I, uh, you know, sort of retain the capital that I have, that is my main goal, especially going, you know, getting closer and closer into 2023. So, uh, I'm not trying to like, like this week, right? There were times where I felt like maybe I could have gotten a little more out of the market, but the market gives you only what it gives you on a day-to-day -day basis. And Especially if you can't like watch every, that, that's the advantage of trading at home is that you can keep your eyes on multiple markets that might be influencing your, the, the stock or whatever instrument you're trading. If you're on a phone, it's harder to do that. You basically, you can look at the news. You can maybe have two or three windows open. At home, I can watch the dollar. I can watch bonds. I can watch other financial, fintech stocks. I can watch the banks. I can watch the volatility index. Um, and you should, you should be watching a lot more than just the one instrument you're interested in or the one asset you're investing in. Um, some people find it boring, but at times I find it boring too, but I force myself to look at the financial news and, and, and at least skim over some of the headlines, you know, read what some of the famous banking people are saying. Uh, and, and I think that's a, definitely a good place to start. So that's pretty much everything. Uh, as always, until next time, I'll see you guys on the next video.